Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I realized we are way, way, way overdue for a reading update. I think the last time that I talked to you about what I was planning to read or what I was reading was back in January, so um, we're gonna just convene here for a mid-year reading update. And I'll just tell you a little bit about what's been going on so far this year for me in terms of reading. I will say that it has been a very slow reading year for me. And I'm sure that you can, you know, figure out some reasons why, even though I wasn't doing much in my first trimester, I also wasn't reading very much. Um, I just took everything at a really slow pace and really just didn't do much at all, except for watch Critical Role mostly. So it's been a bit of a slow year. Storygraph tells me I've read 11 books so far this year, which is not bad. It also tells me it's taking me approximately two months to read a book now, which if any of you have been on this channel for a while and you know how fast I usually read, that's ridiculously slow for me. I usually get through multiple books in a month and now it's taking me about two months per book to finish it, which honestly sounds about right. Although I did have kind of like a, a surge and then a slump, if you will. I read pretty slowly through most of my first trimester, and then I had a day where our internet went out, and I ended up finishing like three or four books in just a couple days while we waited for it to get repaired. So, you know, I feel like a good third of my reading for the year so far has just been clumped within that few days when our internet was out. So it's just a really weird reading year for me in general. Now I don't actually have physical copies of most of the books that I've read this year because I really focused primarily on library books this year. So a lot of the books that I've read, especially earlier in the year, I've already returned to the library. So um, not that much to show you in terms of books, but I will talk about some of the books that I read. I'm not going to go through all 11 of them, but I'll kind of go through the highlights with you. So right at the beginning of the year, I read just a few really forgettable books. I read a couple nonfiction books. Um, I read a really forgettable fiction book. I honestly don't really remember anything about it right now. Um, and then I also read an okay book of poetry. But then I moved on to, this is a book I've been reading forever and I finally, finally, finally finished it because it is a chunker and you can see why it took me so long. I finally finished Night Street Women, um, which is a kind of portrait of the women who kind of changed the modern art movement. I saw a Joan Mitchell exhibit at the Baltimore Museum of Art and really enjoyed it and I saw this book in the gift shop so I got my parents to get it for me for Christmas and definitely well worth all the time it took me to read it. So I um, would recommend it to anybody who's really interested in art and art history um, especially in the history of women in art. I found it super, super interesting. These women have lived fascinating lives and a lot of times really made some unconventional choices in their lives for the time that they were living in. So I just, I just ate up every single one of their stories and I loved it. It's just not a very fast read, you know, it's very detailed and, um, Mary Gabriel does a lot of research. So you really have to take your time to kind of get through it, but I really loved every second of reading it. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to read it again, but um, I probably will just kind of go back to snippets of it from time to time because it's just such an interesting read. So then there were a few more books that I read, a lot of nonfiction this year, and a lot of books that were good but not like I need to highlight them here. I read a like a Beatrix Potter biography that was good, but like the writing style wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. I read a surprisingly funny book called Touchy Subject, which was about the history and philosophy of sex ed. Um, and I really appreciated for a book that is primarily like a work of research that they did include some humor in it. Um, I reread The Everyday Advocate, which is um, a book on religion and social justice that I had read before. I was teaching a class on it, so I uh, did a reread of that, and that still remains a great book. Um, then around middle of May, I finished another book that I really enjoyed, and that's Robert Douglas Fairhurst's The Story of Alice, which is um, kind of a biography of Lewis Carroll and a, a picture of kind of 
the, the life and circumstances that were going on around him and his relationship to um, like the, the real Alice and her family, although it went into some of the speculation around like whether Alice is actually a composite of people versus one person. Um, and it just really got into a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I found it to be one of the most comprehensive pictures of Lewis Carroll that I've ever read, and I found that it kind of also really explained a lot about the Victorian era and how they look at some things differently than we would look at them now. And it really enabled me actually recently, I think it was last week or the week before, I got into a really great conversation with somebody on Instagram about Lewis Carroll where she was kind of insinuating that um, like some of the things that he did had ulterior motives and I was kind of referencing the book basically and saying that like a lot of Victorian attitudes were really different than nowadays and so while some of the things that like happened in the Victorian era might not be things that we support we can't automatically assume the thoughts or motives behind things just because of how we would experience them today and it ended up being a really fruitful conversation it was a really cool thing to talk about um, but I really felt like this book kind of helped me with that, and as many of you know, I am like an avid Lewis Carroll scholar. It has become kind of a special interest for me to do research into the Victorian era and Lewis Carroll in particular. So I obviously really enjoyed that. I appreciated that he found kind of a lot of um, texts that are in libraries that he was able to get some historical context and background on, and that he was able to talk to kind of the Lewis Carroll estate and the Alice Little estate um, to get some more perspectives and I just thought it was so well researched and it was really good and I, I really do recommend it if you are also interested in Lewis Carroll scholarship. Also around the same time I finished another book, very different. Um, you might all, if you have been reading this for a while, been pleased to know that I finished Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry and it's as great as everybody says it is. A very adorable, cozy fantasy book. Um, definitely, I am in my cozy fantasy era. I really am enjoying kind of the the cozy books that help me turn my brain off. I'm not much of like a, I guess, what we used to be more traditional cozy books, like, like romance novels and stuff like that. I do read more romance now because I feel like the genre has really expanded from how it was when I was growing up. But... A lot of things that, like, fluffy books that people think of um, are not, like, my favorite things to read. But now that, like, cozy fantasy is entering its kind of heyday, I am here for it. I'm ready to read all of the cozy fantasy. Um, I follow several people on Instagram who read mostly cozy fantasy, and I have not found a suggestion that they have given that I have, like, not taken and enjoyed. So... More Travis Baldry is definitely in my future. More Cozy Fantasy is in my future. Um, there's not much to say about this book except it was delightful and I loved it. After that, I read We Fed an Island, which is a book written by Jose Andres about the um, hurricane relief in Puerto Rico and his experience there of um, trying to set up kind of World Central Kitchen there. Now, this book was so far the flop of the year. And I'm so sorry to say that because I love Jose Andres. I love what Jose Andres is doing um, in places where people desperately need food access and desperately need what he is bringing to the table. Um, I think he is a great chef and he is a great business person. And I really just don't think that he should have written a book. Like, he needed an editor so bad. Um, he basically had like three points in We Fed an Island. He was like, I wanted to feed all the people on the island. I felt like I didn't get any help from, you know, the government. And the government should have just done things my way the whole time. Those are basically his three points. He reiterated them so much. Like, he w it was so repetitive. Um, he repeated himself within the same page. Like, he would say... I wanted to feed the whole island. And then, like, within the same page, he would say it again. And I understood that, like, he was going for a thematic thing, but I really think he, like, really hit it too hard. Like, it was... I felt bad because the book just became so not interesting because he 
the book was only like, I don't know, 250 pages long. It could have been 100 pages and he would have still been able to say the same stuff. And so I just felt bad. I got through the whole thing, but I just felt bad for like not enjoying it. And I also, as somebody who has worked for like government agencies or worked closely with government agencies, I kind of had to roll my eyes at some of his stuff because he clearly comes from the world of business. Um, which d works very well for what he's doing. But his constant, like, complaining about how the government agency should have done things his way, like, while I empathize with how he felt, it just really was showing me that he does not understand how those agencies work. He doesn't understand why we have appropriations laws. He was kind of just like, you should just have given me all the money, you know? And, I, and instead of having to go through the bidding process, and I don't think he understands like, why we have those protections in place, um, because, like, just somebody just coming in and saying, oh, hi, I'm a business, we should just give you all the money, um, just doesn't, it can lead to some really not good situations, and so it just felt like, I don't know, it felt like he didn't understand, which he acknowledged, that he said people in the government agencies told me I didn't understand, um, but it also didn't feel like he really tried to understand, you know? He just came in and told everybody that they should do things how he said, and then he didn't seem to comprehend why people weren't responding well to that, you know? So, like, still am a huge supporter of Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen and everything that they do, but just, just didn't think that reading this book was necessary. <laughs> And then the last book that I finished before I go into what I'm reading now is called Soul Food, The Surprising Story of American Cuisine, One Plate at a Time. You saw this in my last vlog, which is two videos ago, um, that I was reading this book. It was a great book. I learned so much about soul food, about Southern cuisine, about um, like kind of West African food and where everything there came from, and all of the threads that kind of come together in this cloth to be what we understand as soul food today and create this kind of cultural experience that we all know. So I was very happy to read that book. It also gave me some cool context because I'm heading out in a couple of days to New Orleans for um, the rest of the week. And then I am actually heading in September to Charleston, South Carolina. And one of the things I really liked about this book is that it gave me a really cool perspective that I can use while I'm there and like when I'm choosing where I want to eat and stuff like that. I definitely like when I'm planning my trip to Charleston, I have a really cool kind of like, you know, diversity lens that I want to do for the trip in a way. And so I think reading about soul food and about like the whole culture around soul food and Southern food um, is really going to help me have a very different trip to uh, those states that I've seen many people have, and I'm excited to kind of see what it brings me. So here's a recommendation for you for what I'm reading now, and this will look familiar if you saw my video in January. I basically came back to this book after putting it on my list in January and not getting around to it. I kind of came back to it later and got it back out from the library, and I'm almost done with it, which is good because I want to return it before I go to New Orleans. So. Um, this, continuing my kind of special interest in Victorian history, um, I have Ruth Goodman's How to Be a Victorian. And I got this book knowing I was going to love it. You've heard kind of another version of this story um, in my January video. But Ruth Goodman was like my obsession during quarantine. Her shows where she and some other historians like would move into like farms or houses or estates from different time periods and live in them with kind of a, a historian's lens. So it was somebody who actually like knows what they're talking about, um, were my absolute obsessions. I binge watched them while I was in quarantine. So I already knew because I, because Ruth Goodman wrote this book, I already knew I was going to love it, but I really, really would highly recommend it. If you want to learn more about the Victorian era, I have learned so much from this book. I was just talking with my parents at lunch today about how many different things I learned from this book. And I'm not even done yet. I have like 90 pages left. Um, but it's a quick read, so I think I'll be able to finish it and return it to the library tomorrow. Um, I'll probably read some tonight, and I'll read a little bit more tomorrow and get it finished. And then I have some new books that I'm going to take with me to New Orleans, but I have not quite decided what yet. I'll probably 
try to limit myself and only take one book because we are going to New Orleans. I am going as an adult chaperone for um, a couple of kids who are going to a youth gathering. So I will be busy the whole time. This is really just a book for me to read on the plane or like in little pockets of time and because I can't ever be without a book no matter where I go and no matter how busy I am. So I haven't really nailed down which one I'm going to pick yet, but we'll see. So that is what I have been reading this year. Um, 11 books, going on 12, a very slow reading year for me, but kind of just like a slow and steady wins the race approach. And I am hoping to get a lot more read by the end of the year and continue to have a, a strong recap for all of you at the end of the year. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are reading something wonderful right now. Feel free to go in the comments and tell me what it is because I always love to hear about what all of you are reading. And I will talk to you in the video that I am putting up next week. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.